Hi everybody, my name is Terry and this is the Catholic Breakdown. I was at the dentist this month and I was talking with the hygienist about me being Catholic. She said she could never be Catholic because we have the Father, the Son, and Mary. To which I said, what? The hygienist thought that Catholics considered Mary a part of the Trinity. The Trinity, for the record, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some Protestants believe that we worship Mary, or that Mary's God, or Mary's higher than God. There's a lot of confusion about Mary. So let's break down who Mary is, what she is not, what she can do, and why we have such a special devotion to her. Who Mary is. Mary is the mother of Jesus. Jesus is God. Therefore, Mary is the mother of God. Also of note, as God is king of the universe, and Mary is the mother of God, we call her the queen. This is an old monarchy thing that we adapted for Mary. Think of the queen mother. In scripture, Mary was a young betrothed virgin who God said, hey, you're pregnant, and she said, all right. I mean, talk about faith. She gave birth to the savior of the world, raised him, hung out with him, saw him executed, was given over to John and therefore the church, sees him resurrected, helps the apostles found the church, and then goes to heaven. Also, when someone's in heaven, we call them a saint. Who Mary is not. Mary is not another god. She's not a member of the Trinity. She's not a demigod. She's not anything like that. What Mary can do. Mary, like all saints, can hear our prayers in heaven and pray for us. I'm going to have another video explaining saints hearing our prayers, but if you're really curious, check out Revelations 5.8. She does not have any special powers. She cannot grant our prayers. She cannot control our destiny. God alone has the authority to do that. What Mary can do is pray for us and intercede for us. And while Mary does not have any authority, she does not have any special power, she does hold a special place in God's heart. She's his mother. At the wedding in Cana, in John chapter 2, the bride and the groom run out of wine. As somebody who has held a wedding, this is a big no-no. Mary asks Jesus to help, and Jesus replies, my hour has not yet come. Mary, in true mom fashion, tells the servers, do whatever Jesus asks of you. So Jesus asks for jugs of water, the servers bring him jugs of water, he turns it into wine, and everybody has a great day. The lesson here, besides wine being awesome, is that Jesus listened to his mother. He changed his mind because his mom asked him to. Don't we all do what our mothers ask? So we know Mary is a powerful intercessor for us. Why we have such a special devotion to Mary? Because of all this, Catholics hold a very special place in their heart for Mary. We love her because Jesus loved her. After all, in Luke chapter one it's written, all generations will call her blessed. That's what we're doing, she's the blessed mother. Our devotion to her is not worship. Our prayer to her is not worship. Worship is something completely different, and I'll make another video about that. Our worship is for God alone. We do not worship Mary. Now, are there people that take it a bit far? Probably, but those are the extremes and that's against the rules. It's also worth noting that Mary is an encouraged, but not necessary tool in our toolbox. We don't have to pray to Mary. We don't have to have a statue of her in our home. We don't have to pray the rosary. We don't even have to say a single Hail Mary. If you go to confession and the priest says, for your penance, pray four Hail Marys, and you don't like praying the Hail Marys, you can ask your priest for a different penance. Mary is not required to be Catholic, but she was required for Jesus to be born. And because of that, we hold a special place in our hearts for her. God bless and get a colonoscopy! I'll have another video explaining why saints can hear our prayers, but if you're really curious, see John chapter 5, 8. Nope, nope, not John. Revelation.